Hello everyone and welcome. My name is uh, Kelly Looney with AWS and uh, once again welcome to our uh, webinar along with our uh, great partner Delphix and uh, we're here to talk about um, uh, DevOps and cloud data uh, with a uh, if you know anything about AWS you know that we like to speak through our customers and we've got a great example here for you today uh, with a um, uh, with a university system um, uh, a CSU, uh, California State University, and uh, we've got some excellent speakers to talk to you about uh, an example of bringing digital services to a half a million uh, university students. Let me start off just by just uh, introducing uh, who will be on the on the webinar. Uh, uh, first of all, myself. Uh, my name is Kelly Looney. Uh, I work in the uh, AWS partner organization. I've got a background of 35 years in software development, and I work in our DevOps segment team. So I work with, with all of our partners uh, involved in really in modern software development, um, uh, really at Amazon, at AWS, everything that we do is DevOps uh, style of development. And so I work with all of our partners that are devoted to that style of development. Uh, uh, whether they be technology vendors or consulting them, uh, uh, vendors. And so let me uh, also have our other speakers uh, introduce themselves. Uh, first, uh, Tony Orlando from Delphix. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, uh, good to be here today. Happy to be here with Amazon and Rudy from Unisys. I do run business development at Delphix, and I look forward to um, talking a little bit about the, the CSU and Delphix story here in a few minutes. And Rudy from Unisys. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Tony. Uh, name's Rudy Gonzalez. I'm with Unisys, and I oversee the CSU program. And I'm excited to share our transformation transformation story with all of you. So here's our agenda for today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about kind of the uh, the AWS perspective. I think that that most people here on the webinar know know a little bit about who AWS is. So, so what I want to really want to do is kind of talk about a little bit about our vision for where software is going and especially with DevOps and kind of give you the perspective of where DevOps is going, where Ops is going, and then let's get into this story first by introducing you to our to to Delphix, which is a great partner. I was really excited to to do this webinar with Delphix because I think that Delphix addresses a really key problem that a lot of other people aren't addressing when it comes to DevOps. And then let's jump into this particular um, example of how Unisys working with Delphix really solved a, 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 big, a, a big problem for, uh, for a customer. And then we'll we'll do some Q and A and and talk about some next steps after that. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the the AWS perspective on DevOps. Um, I think there's a lot of agreement nowadays as, as far as what we're trying to get to. You know, we kind of know what good looks like in software development. The challenge is it's really difficult to get there. I mean. We, we know what really advanced software systems, um, the ones that are able to, to really make the changes necessary uh, uh, to, to react to rapidly changing markets and rapidly changing requirements. We, we know what those look like now. It's, 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 it's the way systems that Amazon is building today are developed. It's the way you, you see uh, uh, systems at, at places like Netflix and various other uh, um, advanced uh, companies are building, they're, they're large systems made up typically out of independently scalable microservices. And the architectures that people are, are migrating towards are, are these microservices architectures. And they're, and they're, they're, they're headed towards Container oriented uh, architectures or serverless architectures that are also kind of uh, encapsulated uh, in, in, in things like containers, uh, perhaps micro uh, VMs. Uh, they're wrapped up in APIs. They're able to deliver updates continuously. That's the whole reason for going to a microservices architecture is you're able to, to constantly change and change safely. 
Um, they're able to scale globally. They're fault tolerant. They're able to carefully manage state and persistence. That allows them to, to scale cleanly. And they have security built in. And so this is what we all want. The problem is it's really hard to get there because, because we've got large legacy investments in place. We've got large databases in place. We've got a lot of, of, of software that we've created and built over 30 years that's already in place. And moving to these modern applications is just not, uh, not easy and it's going to take a lot of time. So moving to the, the, these newer practices that we, we tend to call, use the moniker DevOps, uh, getting there, um, we need all the help we can get. And, and you know, I, we talk a lot about DevOps today, and DevOps and cloud are the two things that people uh, talk about a lot. And, and certainly it's possible to do DevOps in the absence of cloud. People have done it. They've done DevOps on-premise. But the thing that I'm finding today is that it's almost always the case the two things are happening at the same time. You know, they're happening together. And, and in most cases nowadays, DevOps is, is happening. I, I'd say more DevOps is happening on AWS than anywhere else. And there's a reason for that. It's because of the tremendous advantages that you have in doing DevOps on AWS. Now, why is that? Because you've got the ability to get started immediately. There's a lot of things already in place for you. A great way to think about a cloud, really, is it's a big list of things that you don't have to do. There's a whole set of hundreds of fully managed services that you can take advantage of in a cloud uh, that allows you to just get a jump start on your work. And this is an incredible productivity enhancer for the things that you want to get done. So that, that's, that's, that's the big jump start that you get in getting started and getting starting to get your work done. And when you're working with AWS, everything that's there is built for tremendous scale. Everything's programmable. Everything's automatable. And security is always built in. And not just any security, state-of-the-art security built by some of the 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 best people in, in the world at doing this and some of the most robust security that there is. And everything in AWS is built in terms of instead of a big upfront investment, it's built with pay as you go in mind. And this allows you to experiment and try things without a huge, without a huge investment up front. And then finally, there's a part of the organization that I'm in. There's the large partner community. Virtually every vendor in the IT space out there is working with AWS and is, is making their products compatible with AWS. And Delphix is a great example here. They're working closely with us and ensuring that everything that they do works well within the AWS uh, ecosystem. So you can confidently work with AWS knowing that virtually every partner um, out there is making sure that their products work well and cleanly with the AWS ecosystem. Now, finally, the thing I want to do is talking about going into the future, going into this sort of container and serverless world and moving that in that direction. There's sort of some different ways to think about where we're going in terms of operations. And there's just some, some, some things that I want to leave you with as far as how you want to think about operations uh, going forward. Um, I think this whole idea that we've had for operations that you're going to have an organization that doesn't that doesn't really understand software that's going to quote unquote run software for you. I think that whole idea is just not going to be a thing anymore in the future. I think that that you know running software without understanding that software it's just it's just that's just not going to be happening anymore. Operations has to understand the software it's running. And infrastructure is going to be just invisible. It's going to be generated. It's going to be something your vendor does for you automatically in most cases. And so, and so dev and ops are going to happen in the same organization. And, and you know, obviously, DevOps 
you know, those two things come together. And operations is going to be more embedded with dev, and it's going to be watching running software and looking to make it better. So, so your your software that does monitoring, logging, and observability, that's what going to be where operations lives and works. So watching running software and looking for ways to make it better is going to be where your best technical people are really going to be. And these sort of the things that, that, that we think of as this SRE types of activities, uh, that's going to be operations job one. And you're going to be moving from the sort of idea of reacting to software problems to more being proactive about figuring out software problems and, and, and heading them off before they, they start to happen. So the last thing I want to talk about here as we kind of move into what Delphix does is that I really want you to, to, as I mentioned earlier, I really want to look at, I think Delphix is helping to solve one of the really thorny problems of getting into DevOps. I think that the whole data problem for DevOps is one of the hard things that are out there. A lot of the, the especially the legacy software that, that's out there is very, very dependent on data and moving data into this DevOps world is one of the really hard things about operations, or really the hard things moving forward. And I think uh, that Delphic, the Delphic solution is a unique one in helping you move into this new world of operations. And so uh, I think that this is a, it, it, it's, it's really an important piece to help you kind of move forward with all of this. So Tony, I'd like to, to turn it over to you to let you kind of talk a little bit about how this can help us move forward into this new world. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Uh, that, that's great stuff. And uh, data is hard, and it's uh, very hard in this DevOps world that we live in today, as you uh, you indicated. Again, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Tony Orlando. I am um, the SVP of Worldwide Business Development at uh, Delphix. And um, I'm uh, happy to be here today. You guys have, have heard all the buzzwords. Uh, you know, Kelly just hit many of them, right? Innovation, transformation, speed, agility, disruption, analytics, machine learning, cloud, and, you know, even, uh, how about this one, hybrid cloud, right? Uh, why, does, why does any of that matter? Uh, it matters because uh, over the last few years um, for different reasons, but I've met with hundreds of customers, and they're all experiencing very similar pain and the same challenges. And I'm I'm referring to not just the challenges related to moving faster in digital, but also the massive challenges that Kelly alluded to in data. And one of the biggest bottlenecks to digital transformation is access to data by the people that need it to do their jobs. And apologies. And, um, you know, we at Delphix have come to call these folks that need data to do their jobs data consumers. Um, these data consumers, they're more and more often waiting for access to data to do their jobs, whether they be developers, data scientists, or engineers. And as they wait, and their wait times grow, the necessity to secure and really tightly govern this data is, is growing daily. And that further complicates and delays the access to data that these folks need, that these people need, that everyone needs to do their jobs today. So just like in digital transformation, data transformation is also a multi-step journey due to the complexity and just simply the challenges of ex accessing and securely delivering data in and across enterprises. And, you know, this... Next slide here represents, if I can get us to it, um, it really does represent the chaos that uh, most of us, probably all of us, experience and live with uh, on a daily basis. Uh, there, there's many concurrent initiatives that um, are competing uh, with many priorities. And in addition to that, data sprawled across a range of uh, data sources and um, many locations, different locations geographically. I mean, today's global economy has uh, data uh, in business models flowing constantly 24-7 around the globe. So today's data access needs 
to often result in manual multi-step error prone workflows. <clears throat> and any automation that's typically put in place usually consists of some very brittle scripts that break just as soon as the context in which they operate shifts, just even so slightly. So to make it even harder and more complex, today's data typically contains sensitive information, right? And that information is subject to the regulatory and compliance requirements that um, dictate that the data be anonymized or obfuscated before it can be delivered to the people or data consumers, as I like to call them, that need it to do their jobs. And, you know, these are, these are probably some of the data challenges you face on your transformation initiatives and your own journeys to cloud. So today's presentation will outline the steps of a large California university took to consolidate, manage, and improve efficiencies in data management to support their own strategic initiatives while at the same time realizing the benefits of cloud architecture. Uh, Delphix and AWS uh, in partnership were both key enablers uh, of the success of this particular customer's journey. Before we take you through the customer story though, I'd like to just take a few minutes, if I could, and introduce you to Delphix. The Delphix dynamic data platform eliminates uh, the data challenges and pain points that I talked about earlier and that Kelly talked about earlier. And we like to say that at Delphix, our superpower is our ability to deliver terabytes of secure data in minutes. You'll hear uh, more about that superpower from Rudy, but what we do truly changes the physics and economics of data in the enterprise. We change the physics and economics of data in the enterprise. And I want you to think about Delphix as a data provider for DevOps. You can write code quickly today, right? So shouldn't your data be as agile as your code? I mean, it's a rhetorical question, of course it should. Of course your data should be as agile as your code, but it's not. And essentially, I want you to take three things away from this slide. We deliver secure data fast in a self-service way that makes the complex in data simple. So we allow data consumers, right, the folks that need data to do their jobs, to eliminate their wait states and serve themselves when and where they need the data. So by fast, imagine, just imagine for a second, being able to provision and secure virtual copies of production data in minutes versus weeks, and doing that yourself. Now you can write and test code at your speed, and you can test workload migrations to the cloud on your time frame with really no dependencies on others, allowing you to accelerate your projects, and in this case, cloud adoption. So leveraging Delphix for data agility, for data you'll agility. get self-service control of your data, to include the ability to rewind, to get this, a rewind and refresh when you want to any point in time you want within seconds. And you can do that within your own virtual copy of the data. You're also empowered to bookmark and even share your data sets with your colleagues and maybe consultants in your business in what we call Delphix data pods. And finally, we also at Delphix provide peace of mind that is needed to govern data that obviously is getting distributed across the business and across the enterprises today. And we allow you to stay compliant with mandates and regulations such as PCI, GDPR, and HIPAA. Our data masking capabilities, well, they identify and replace sensitive data with fictitious data, but it's valid equivalents that preserve the referential integrity of that data and the data source. And what that means and what it implies is we maintain the business value of the data, even though it's obfuscated, allowing it to behave just like your original production data and your databases that until now was just simply not accessible, or if it was, it was painfully slow and hard to get access to. So Delphix makes the complex in data simple. And most companies today are engaged in key technology initiatives uh, where data plays a central role. As again, Kelly alluded, um, and I've talked to uh, a bit earlier with respect to the pains in data. And I suspect most of you folks listening, the people listening to this webinar, will fall into one of the industries shown here. And regardless of the industry, um, companies are using data 
in strategic ways to create the next wave of applications that result in new revenue streams or new customer experiences. And for DevOps teams, rapid delivery of data is critical to keep pace with code development and testing so that they can accelerate the release cadence. And fast, secure data provisioning is central to workload migration, which requires iterative dev tests to ensure a seamless cutover to cloud. So today, we'll be talking about CSU as a Delphix Unisys customer story on AWS, but the need, the takeaway here is the need to leverage data to drive innovation is a ubiquitous requirement across all industries and businesses. Our guest speaker, Rudy Gonzalez, will explain the methodical and, and comprehensive approach they use to solve data challenges as part of um, the university system at CSU moving to the cloud. Um, and, you know, before uh, we bring Rudy up, you know, for my last slide, I, I don't know um, if everybody knows who Delphix is. It's D-E-L-P-H-I-X, and we work with some of the largest brands in the world. And as I mentioned, over the last few years, I've met with hundreds of customers that are all, they're all experiencing the same pain and challenges. Some are changing the data game, while others are just stuck in their old ways. And data bottlenecks were in the way of innovation for all of them. The, their digital transformation had to include data transformation. And Delphix helped them eliminate their data bottlenecks and realize the true transformational value and business value of their investments in change. So now let me introduce uh, Rudy Gonzalez from Unisys. Rudy has a really exciting story to tell about how CSU transformed their student experience through a systematic approach to eliminate data as a bottleneck to innovation. And you know, Rudy's got some amazing results to share. You know, for, for example, they, they now securely leverage production data and move terabytes 99% faster than the manual processes they used to use. And their dev test teams can independently restore production quality databases in less than 15 minutes without having to involve anyone from the database and operations teams. So Rudy, you've lived it. You've come out the other side successful. We're excited to have you share this great story. I know this is a tremendous uh, project success for you and your team, and the results are incredible, just truly amazing. As I pass the controls to you, Rudy, I've, I've got to ask uh, the obvious question, I mean, and it's crazy, Rudy. Why aren't more companies and enterprises overcoming their data challenges with the billions of dollars they're spending on transformation investments? Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. And that's a great question. It's a great challenge. I think many times this whole world of the cloud is, is forcing a different level of governance, a different level of collaboration, a different level of involvement of various groups. And you really need to focus on a collaborative effort to make some of these major dramatic changes happen. It can't be just done as a one-off. And I think that it's more of an organizational challenge more than anything else in achieving some of the things that you and Kelly talked about. Hopefully, uh, our, our story can shed some light on overcoming some, some of those challenges. And maybe the, the real answer to your question will be, uh, will be conveyed as I go through my slides. So um, with that in mind, I think I have control now. Um, I'll try having control. Um, so thank you, Tony, and hello, everyone. My name is Rudy Gonzalez. As uh, Kelly said, um, I'm a managing director for Unisys for the CSU program. And building on what Kelly and Tony have already mentioned, and as a trusted partner and advisor in, in, in such initiatives, I'm pretty proud to share with you a digital transformation story whose execution involved leveraging the Delphix platform and the AWS um, cloud. Uh, this combination of partnership allowed CSU to harness the power of a hybrid cloud uh, transformation so we can deliver, at the end of the day, a better campus support model, but ultimately lead to a better uh, student experience. So let me see if I can move to the next slide. All right. Um, perfect. Okay. Um, our story involves the nation's largest four-year public university uh, with 23 campuses. Uh, we're going to keep calling it the, the CSU. Uh, it's just shy of half a million students, employs a lot of people, over 52,000 faculty and staff. And this large-scale program is centrally based at the chancellor's office, where we support the university system through what is called a common management system. So over the course of the presentation, I will be referring to CMS, and that is the Centralized Shared Service 
uh, representing the common management system. Go to the next slide here. The CSU Common Management System, uh, CMS for short, is, is a massive PeopleSoft Oracle system. It's really considered the ERP of the university, and it delivers centralized IT shared services for human resources, for finance, for student administration of things like uh, student management, student enrollment, student registration, and it does this for all the 23 CSU campuses. And as the California administrators are taking steps to ensure that this state contracting system can scale these services, right, including enrollment and scheduling and even employee compensation. One of the key priorities for CMS is to connect the campuses to data more efficiently and securely. And as Tony mentioned, right, deliver greater agility and flexibility as an essential experience. And this, in this regard would mean the campus support resource experience. Go to the next slide. So why the CMS hybrid cloud? We kind of threw that topic early on. And in essence, committing for CSU, committing to a longer term capital investment in the legacy application platform of this massive system just did not make financial or time return on effort sense. So as a result, the university's goal for CMS was to modernize it. It was to better integrate CMS to the campuses through the implementation of you know, secure system-wide hybrid cloud capabilities so we can be more agile and in essence deliver an on-demand infrastructure. The approach that we, that we took would allow CSU to leverage the performance and stability of the secure private cloud we already had in place and combine it with the flexibility and elasticity of the AWS public cloud all in an automated orchestrated fashion and this would offer you know the combined university system much greater agility to execute all the various digital cloud strategies that they have and are working on to better serve the campuses improve the student experience and we need to do it right um, most of these are dealing with unlimited checkbooks right all of you are dealing with budgets and the confinements of what that return on investment is all about so we ultimately had to do this while enhancing the operational efficiencies of our program and business, all while reducing the costs. We'll go to the next slide. All right. Can, can you, uh, I think I pressed too hard and went one too, one too, one too many here, guys. Can I get help to go one back, please? That'd be wonderful. Thanks. All right. As with any hybrid cloud transformation of this size and complexity, may, probably very similar to maybe some of the ones that you guys might be involved with, there are really four major challenges that we faced with CMS. So let me touch on that very quickly. There was always all, there was the pressure to reduce costs at a time when we knew the university would be growing. Their infrastructure was being put to a strain relative to database and storage systems. And there would be increased costs of man maintaining those systems over time, including doing the backups and all the normal operations kinds of things. This was happening at a time when the demands from the campuses for greater and faster access to the data and the data cloning were increasing dramatically for our purposes. And adding to this complexity, was the need to better align this to normal application development projects and the challenges that Tony alluded to in terms of data delivery, where the campuses needed to keep pace with their own growing campus application development demands and projects. And then it was further compounded by increasing the security requirements to raise the security posture for CMS as all this data is being distributed. So given this complex situation, um, Unisys executed uh, the CMS hybrid cloud transformation in phases. Uh, in phases that were driven by very specific outcomes and priorities, they were not necessarily based on technology capabilities. Additionally, this transformation that we went under took place by introducing cloud elements really very incrementally and strategically because we knew that we needed to do it uh, while still maintaining seamless operations and management and governance of CMS 
and we cannot obviously compromise the high quality of services to the customer. So in this phased approach, we in essence made the first one uh, be called cloud ready. We needed to make sure that the that the client was ready to accept the change, absorb the organizational change, and they were ready to take on the cloud. We followed that to making sure that we enable the CMS hybrid cloud capabilities, and we're going to finalize it by the automated and orchestrated integration of services being delivered within the hybrid cloud. The Delphix platform and the use of the AWS cloud really allowed us to achieve the key outcomes of every single one of the phases. In phase one, in making CMS cloud ready, we, we had to do some other things as you would expect, right? You guys are all dealing with your own transformations yourselves, right? We needed to migrate to a cloud-ready Linux world first because we were not there. We needed to uh, deploy a private cloud state-of-the-art data center uh, for close proximity to AWS because at the levels of volume and capacity that we were dealing with, right, latency was a huge issue. And we needed to expand faster into the public cloud and we needed to move to much more uh, closer and common architecture across the, across the way, right? So we implemented a common service management system, a common security and monitoring and management system. But more critical to all these was the virtualization and the use of the Delphix platform to virtualize all the CMS data where scale and volume and portability of that data made it much faster for us to pursue the initiatives that, that were gonna be coming before us. So in looking to accelerate uh, the pace of CMS innovation and revolutionize really the service delivery to the campuses, we implemented the Delphix virtualization platform and it played a huge role in how we began delivering data to the campuses. In a virtualized world, the data is much more portable so delivering the campuses at higher speeds and capacity was made much more easier, but it also we were also able to deliver it faster from our private cloud to the AWS cloud for various purposes, including the campus data cloning, campus data masking, and really evolving to a situation where the campuses now had an environment that we called data on demand. For, the, for their own campus self-service capabilities. Go to the next slide here. Some of the, some of the key outcomes that we realized, so for us in a nutshell, what, what Delphix allowed us to do was to introduce a very innovative platform that excelled at our volume and capacity needs. It automated data delivery to help us deliver data, data releases faster and more frequently to the applications team at the campuses. And since Delphix delivers virtual mass copies of the CMS production data on demand, and like Tony said, right, in minutes, and using just a fraction of the resources that we're using before, right, we gained tremendous amount of reductions in physical storage. Needless to say, we reduced physical storage consumption dramatically while still allowing the campuses to clone data faster and having self-service capabilities along the way. Prior to Delphix, we were basically handling around um, 200 clones per month that we were servicing for the campuses. Today, we're achieving over 2,000 clones per month and doing it in an automated fashion in terms of minutes and not even hours or days like in the previous world, right? So now the campuses all of a sudden have this ability to instantly refresh copies with updated production data to rewind it, like Tony said, to any previous point in time, to branch out data copies so data versions can align to release versions in their own environment of their own development application setups. And really at the end of the day, the way I see this is that we dramatically improved the productivity of the campuses and the productivity of how we support each of the campuses relative to their development and testing projects, right? With CMS running the virtual data that we talked about, Delphix platform really was leveraged for accelerating and simplifying all those hybrid cloud elements. But, but, but having the ability to really spin up, refresh, tear it down if you want to, and doing it both in the private and in the public cloud environments for the developments of testing, but doing it based on outcomes, not because you had to do it one way, but having the option to do it in the best way to realize the business outcome at play. So 
one one of the one of the things I thought maybe would would bring a little bit more uh, substance to this discussion was sharing with you uh, some of the key operational outcomes that we um, achieved. And while my intent is not to to go through each one of these numbers, I'll, I'll leave the slide up there long enough for you to gain an appreciation for some of these metrics. Right, the success of the Delphix platform enabled CSU to really overcome the challenges that were facing CMS, as I alluded to a few slides back, it resulted in, in, in major game-changing operational outcomes, right, that ultimately made us a better partner to the Chancellor's Office and made us a better partner to the campuses, but truly empowered the people at the end of the line that needed to bring value to the data that needed to be used, right? We really transformed data delivery. As you can see, and these um, in these outcomes, you have things that were being done before, and in the area of things like database cloning and database masking, data restores, dealing with sensitive data and and masking it for, and and taking production data to backup and all the production database backup time that's normally associated with major operations projects. All of it today is 100% automated. And the metrics replace um, days in some cases, but mostly hours into into minutes. All right. And needless to say, um, none of this would be as valuable if we were not able to achieve not only economies of scale, like I said earlier, but realize significant cost savings. Um, earlier in our presentation, um, Tony made the comment of. Delphix changes the economics of your data. And it certainly did for us. And while these numbers are not confidential, they're pretty impactful as it relates to the ability of savings that we were able to realize in this transformation through leveraging Delphix that allowed us to continue to fund our innovative initiatives. So in our fiscal one year um, capability, we were able to save millions of dollars in development storage costs, right? And avoid, you know, in, in our case, almost $3 million of avoided costs that would have been needed had we not used Delphix. Because you're not really backing up everything. We're dealing with virtual data copies. We saved all, over $2.5 million just on backup storage savings. And the number that really stood out as it relates to in the public sector, because they're so conscious about what costs are we avoiding? We were able to avoid almost you know, $7.5 million per year on their major application projects and growth I alluded to by not having to invest in infrastructure that now we were working on a, on a virtual landscape with, right? So pretty, pretty phenomenal numbers and, and truly represent Tony's comment of changing the, the economics of the data. As we shifted from, from um, phase one to phase two, we really um, are dealing with um, how do we enable the CMS hybrid cloud now, right? We did, we did all the things that I mentioned to you already to get CSU ready for this transformation. Now we moved into the phase two and we began operationalizing five key capabilities. For the purposes of today's uh, session, I'm only gonna touch on three of them because those three dealt specifically with Delphix and AWS, right? From a CMS Delphic self-service, right? This new capability, in essence, allowed us to distribute mass data as data pods to provide the campuses the ability to self-provision their clones, request the data when they wanted to in alignment to their process, to their procedures. It's all set up under role-based access controls and all the types of permissions that you would, uh, you would expect. And this capability, further increase the campus productivity and efficiency, right? While decreasing their time to access our data. Phase one, we were doing things so fast, but then once we got done with stuff, the campuses still needed to do their processes, to do their things. The self-service capabilities now allow them to dramatically impact the time and their own productivity to work with the things that they wanted to work under the guidance of campus university-led initiatives. The last two capabilities of CMS PeopleSoft as a service and CMS Data as a service 
as part of our transformation. Um, I'll identify in a couple um, clarifying slides so so we can make the we can hit the point home a little bit better. Tony also mentioned the concept of data pods very very quickly. And when I think of our piece of PeopleSoft as a service in the context of our transformation, adopting what we are calling as a data pods approach, right? CMS was focused on creating a very personalized on-demand campus service experience by securing multiple data copies from the campuses as data pods. And we tailored them to the campus demands on a large scale at very high speeds. So given the portability that we realized with Delphix and the Delphix platform, right, we can accelerate the data delivery, not only of the data, but we can accelerate the cloud migration because we don't need to go from on-premise to a data center only. We can go from our own data center to the cloud, right, and in the cloud easily spin up, refresh, and tear down these public you know, cloud-based data environments that we are delivering for development and testing at the campus level. As such, what this picture is really meant to represent for you guys is that CMS's evolution to a software-defined infrastructure that facilitates these kinds of shared services for the campuses is really what we're looking to achieve by delivering people soft at the service. Our vision of this service is serving via Delphix, right, multiple copies of the PeopleSoft three-tier stack, their web stuff, their app, their database, but doing it in a completely automated fashion. And this fully automated versions of Delphix transactions, right, of multiple instant PeopleSoft copies are being done today really with a press of a button in either the private or the public cloud, right? And, 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 and in the industry or as you guys wrestle with your own activities, but what Delphix is really providing us in this PeopleSoft as a service is what others would call infrastructure as code, right? The net result will be a fully automated process of provisioning the network, the compute, the storage in both our private cloud and in AWS. Ultimately, I think before I get off this picture, representing this picture is the transformative state of PeopleSoft as a service that gives the university the kind of capability to provide private and public cloud services that really match the university requirements. It wasn't because this is what we can do, but rather it is what can the campuses achieve? And then through Delphix and AWS, allocate the most efficient and cost-effective use of resources for that given task. The other major area um, that we were involved with or as part of our transformation was CMS data as a service. That's really the name of the phase in our project, but really it's about data delivery, right, at, at a large scale, but creating value in that data by making it open to be consumable by the campuses in the fastest way possible, right? So the vision of this slide initially as, with, with data as a service is to make CMS data available to all the campuses in its very raw format and open up the CMS PeopleSoft application by making that data more consumable by the individual campuses for their purposes. This is what this picture is meant to depict, right? And using Delphix as the transport and as the extraction element in this process, we're basically moving PeopleSoft Oracle data from our private cloud to AWS in an automated fashion where we very, very quickly, once again, spin up virtual databases. And then using all the AWS, CMS, and other capabilities within AWS, we're making that data more consumable in its raw form. Um, some campuses want us to move it to, to S3 buckets in a CSV format for their purposes. Other, other ones want us to move it to Redshift, Redshift, right, for their own campus purposes. But once in the state, right, the campuses can take advantage of all kinds of cool things of, that exist in the, in the AWS cloud, if you will, and the services that allow them to create value and insight to the data that we are providing. The data today is moving at massive scales, right? We're probably moving about 15 terabytes of data daily right now in terms of what we need to do to serve the campuses. 
and the process is is optimized regularly. So we started it as part of phases, as I alluded to earlier, and we are making incremental improvements. And in the past four to six months, we've realized anywhere from 57 percent um, increases in performance to also an additional 20 to 25 percent in um, advantages around cost savings to better be able to tweak and tweak our our, our service along the way as we get better in optimizing the service to the campuses. So with that in mind, um, as we kind of close a little bit about the story and leave some time in the back end for some questions, um, the, the use of our hybrid cloud transformation strategy in this context, right, really represented uh, at the end of the day, a really good stewardship of the CSU resources in an education environment, right? You really can't throw money at problems. We need to be very judicious on the kinds of returns on investment and returns on effort that we realize. And while this journey has taken almost 24 months from inception to completion, it was done very methodically, right? In a strategy that would allow us to realize the benefits, you know, really from day one, and we had to realize benefits all along the way. So if you kind of think about, right, in conclusion, right, what did we realize in this transformation? Um, we realized the nominal gains in productivity that were focused on outcomes and not really technology capabilities for the sake of themselves. We used the AWS cloud, not as the end, but as a means to an, to an end to realize the kind of value that the campuses were expecting. And we focus on cost management and cost visibility and all those kinds of things above and beyond just capabilities. I hope this story, while in some sense might not be an exact scenario that all of you might be dealing with, highlights a little bit of the predicaments, right, in terms of how we were able to leverage a focus-based initiative, right, leveraging the, the transformation capabilities that we realized with both Delphix and AWS along the way. So thank you again um, for your time and for listening. I really appreciate your attention. And at this point, I guess I will pass back the call to Kelly at this point moving forward to go into the question and answer session if any exist. Thanks a lot, everyone. Absolutely, Rudy. Uh, thanks so much. That's a fantastic story. Uh, absolutely love it. I'd like to go ahead and get started with a little bit of, uh, of q and I've got a, a question for, for each one of you guys. Would like to uh, uh, start out with, uh, with Tony, if possible. Um, Tony, a question for you. Um, you know, I mentioned at the start that, um, I, you know, Delphix is really interesting to me kind of in this, this kind of DevOps uh, uh, arena because I think you hit on something that's really a sticking point for a lot of organizations because I think that, that you know, databases make DevOps hard. And what, what I'd like to ask you is, is explain for us a little bit why databases make DevOps hard and how, DevOps, and how can Delphix, how, how can Delph, uh, I'm sorry, how can Delphix help make DevOps work better in the presence of databases? Yeah, Kelly, that's a that's a great question. I'll try to uh, I'll try to be brief in the answer because um, you know it is a as a complex a problem. It's a complex answer. So if you think about just uh, DevOps in in general, um, you know, in in its origination, it was really about accelerating the development lifecycle, right? So uh, building and integrating uh, pipelines so that code could be written. In a, in a modular way, checked in, checked out, teams could work more efficiently and quickly, that was accomplished. But what ended up happening is now that we can write code quickly, um, the release uh, cycle, right, the release bus is backed up because that code can't be tested quick enough. And today's testing, really, to release with confidence, you have to test with production-grade data, right? It's either production data or copies of production data. And that is very hard to come by. We talked about the regulation, compliance, security controls of data, not to mention the developers most often don't control their own data destiny because databases are managed by database and operations teams. So permission has to be seen. So 
DevOps was, uh, was, was really originated with out forethought for integrating data to be DevOps complete. And then, you know, when you think about uh, the complexity of data, you know, we've got legacy data, homegrown systems, we've got point solutions, we've got our SaaS uh, systems that we're using. They all consist of different data sets, of different databases, but they're all integral to our businesses. They're all integral to our business model and how we serve our customers and ultimately drive revenue. So how do you take all that data and be able to put it in a form and fashion that's accessible by the people, developers in many instances, that need it to write, test, and release code quickly, right? You talked about microservices in your opening comments, right? That, that gives us the ability to write and release code quickly, but we still have to test. We still have to be confident that when we do release, we're not breaking something um, in the system or downstream in the system. So, you know, it's a, it's a complex um, problem getting access to data to really, in a high-scale, confident way, be able to accelerate your DevOps outcomes. So I hope that answers the question, Kelly. It's a great question. Uh, one thing I'll add to it all is that, you know, we know, we know well how to version, you know, code and configuration and all kinds of other stuff. The thing that screws up DevOps so much is versioning appropriately data and databases. And so having that ability to recreate uh, databases at various times and various states and getting data in the right place is, is oftentimes what makes uh, uh, databases throw a monkey wrench into uh, 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 what we're doing with DevOps. And that's the place where I've seen Delphix really, really kind of help is by helping manage a, a lot of what's, of what's going on kind of in, in the whole situation. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I, I've seen it really, really help in a couple of different places. So another, so another Kelly, a question that I'm, I'm, go ahead. I was going to say, so to, to your comment, imagine <laughs> the power of being able to rewind or reset your data near instantaneously to any point in time to solve for that problem. But have that control yeah. to do it yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. It make, makes a big difference. And once again, all too often you see people just completely gloss over the whole database issue and just say, let's ignore the database and do DevOps, you know, uh, outside of it. And you really can't. Uh, uh, so so uh, it, it's, it's important to address it and, and kind of deal with it. So, Rudy, a question for you. You know, I... That whole story, what I loved it was was your ability to you, you you stayed hybrid, but you got a tremendous amount of data moved over into AWS. A lot going on there. I hear that story a lot. And and once you're there, my my question for you is, and you know, I'm not trying to get to you know. What are you going to buy next, or something like that? What I really want to know is, what are your options at this point, from a standpoint of what's your um, once you've got the data there? For a lot of people, once they're in the cloud, now there's position to do all kinds of different analytics, all kinds of different AI, ML, uh, um, a, a lot of different things. Have you got a plan for the sorts of services that you might be able to use next to be able to kind of leverage the data that you've now got potentially in a big data lake in in uh, in, in AWS? Uh, um, now that you've you, you've got a lot of stuff positioned there. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. It's a challenge, and now the campuses are are dealing with uh, Kelly because now the opportunities, right? Imagine the opportunity, right? That exists for them to do all kinds of things. It's almost like we've freed up this uh, opportunities bucket that before they didn't even really need to think about and now it's all there. And we have transferred now that accountability to some extent for them to begin exploiting, you know, what's the art of the possible, right? So as we kind of plan out 
you know, what's happening next. I think two things are really driving uh, a bit to your question. One, um, anything that we're going to be doing next is always was done in phases and in outcomes. So we're very, we're very, I think uh, that what the campus are realizing is, yes, you can do a lot of things, but what is it that you want to realize? What are those outcomes that you want? What is the outcome? You know, where do you want to go? How do you want to get there? And what we see happening next is there's going to be a lot of campuses that are realizing, oh my gosh, I can do this with CMS and PeopleSoft and Oracle at these massive levels. Why do I need my own on-premise data warehouses to be mm -hmm. in existence? Probably don't need those anymore. Why do I need, you know, five data scientists, right, that are waiting, like Tony said, to do all this work, but not really realizing a great return on their effort. You might be able to do, you know, more work with less people, right? There's going to be all kinds of possibilities around, well, why do we need to manage our data only? If Delphix can help Unison deliver the CMS data to us, why can't we use Delphix to deliver the other campus applications data either to other locations or to the data lake themselves. And what's really happening at the end of the day now is that you have a tremendous possibility of data delivery now within the campuses themselves, now really truly bringing value of that data and turning it to information for the campuses in their own graduation initiatives and their own specific campuses led initiatives that before were not being done effectively because of the challenges of technology. And now I think we've removed them pretty effectively. Well, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, and, and, and there's just an absolute world of different services and different things to try uh, uh, that's out there. Uh, let's see, I mean, one other question. It's, it's endless, right? Go ahead, sorry. It's en the, the possibilities in the AWS ecosystem from capabilities, right? A campus would tell you it's endless. It's almost too much, right? And so I think that this gives them a sense of focus, right, on what gives them the best return on effort because, as you mentioned, the capabilities in our mind, I think, with these guys are endless. We keep working to make AWS easy to use, but then we keep adding more and more things uh, that, that make it uh, um, seemingly uh, overwhelming at the same time. So it's a constant battle, <laughs> sort of a yin and yang uh, going on uh, all the time. So, well, folks, we are just about out of time. I, what I will do is Go ahead and show a slide here with some uh, next steps for each one of us. There's our AWS DevOps page. Here's the page for Delphix and AWS as well. Uh, and um, here's some information on each one of our uh, uh, speakers. I want to thank everybody for getting involved, for our, our speakers that are here. Rudy, thanks so much for the presentation. Tony as well. And thank everyone for attending. And uh, uh, we'll see everyone uh, uh, down the road. Really appreciate you being a part of this webinar. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Yep. Thank you.